Today I'm going to show you six different basic pen and ink techniques. So let's get them pens out and let's get started. Now there's a variety of different pens on the market that you can buy for doing pen and ink work. Now I tend to work with pen and wash, in other words I use watercolour over the top of my pens. So I've got to make sure that my pens are fade proof and they don't move, so it's water and fade proof. So therefore they're not going to blur as you have the paint over the top. This particular one's a Unipin fine line, as you can see, but there's other ones on the market. I very often use these, which is a pilot drawing pen, and they all come in different size nibs, that's a 0.3, for example. And there's also other ones in there, so we've got the Faber Castell one, and that's a 0.3. That's got a lovely fine point on that one as well. Nice pen, actually, that particular one. But I have bought some brand new set today, and this one is by Sakura. If you want me to do a video testing these out, let me know in the comments down below, okay? But today, I'm going to be using a size 2, where's it gone? That particular one there, for the Pilot Drawing Pen. And obviously different size nibs for different thickness of lines. Let's start off with the parallel lines. Now, how am I going to draw a ball shape, a three-dimensional ball shape, using parallel lines? So what we need to do is work with the lines vertical all the time. We can go horizontal, whichever way you want to do. I'm going to do them vertical today, okay? Skipping in between, just to kind of break it up. Has a bit more interest to it as well. I'm working away all the way down the paper. Try and keep them fairly straight, best you can anyway, to try and do it freehand for that. Got a big gap there, but that gap can easily get filled in with more lines. Like so, and just keep going all the way along, like I'm doing now. I'm also using a very light pressure as well. I'm not pressing on too hard with the pen here. Now, because I want this to be a light spot from there, imagine the light spot the sunlight coming from that direction. So I need this to be quite pale, quite light in that area. So to do that, what we need to think about is easing off the lines. So in other words, if I just put a few odd ones like that, it's going to get darker towards the bottom, it'll be dark on this side, won't it? Just a few little dips and dabs like that, look, keep tapping it, and increase the amount of marks the lower down that you go, and then just very lightly tap and stipple and hardly anything towards there <laughs> so it gets lighter and lighter and lighter then you can increase the ones in between now we've got to think about trying to get a shape in there how am I going to do that what we need to do is increase the amount of lines for the darker areas so we're going to go for the more darker areas first of all then we'll go for the mid-tones after that okay let's go from the bottom up just for a change. I like to change things around. So working with vertical lines all the time, parallel lines is all it is. Increasing the amount of lines, I'm going to go both ways. Increasing the amount of lines in the darker areas. So this is going to be the darkest side of the ball. And already we're starting to get a little bit of shape in there, aren't we? Let's increase the darkness now down towards the base just by adding a few little lines here like that, keep them parallel all the time. And the more lines you add, the darker that area will go. You can see just by working with vertical lines, you can get quite a lot of shape going <laughs> within a subject like this, just from a simple circle to more of a three-dimensional ball feel. So that's the way I would create a three-dimensional ball using parallel lines. Yes, you can take more time in it than I've done here and try and get your lines, well, much neater than I've got mine, that's for sure. But it gives you a general idea on how to do that. Now, let me show you an example when I've used parallel line marks with my watercolour pen and wash paintings. So what we're going to do, add some lines in this way around, like that, some kind of guide marks, and just mapping it out really is what we're looking for. Think of that gentle curve. Now, it might be easier in some cases if you're left-handed like me, Turn the paper around like this lot and then do that because then you've got this natural kind of curve of your hand as well when you're doing this haven't you so now we've got to think about crisscross and all crisscross is is something that i do with my watercolor paints on a regular basis to show you my little tester here lot this sort of idea so what we're using is elongated lines or elongated crosses like that all the time so how are we going to create a three-dimensional ball using crisscross marks okay crisscross a little tip using your pens, always put the lid back on when you don't use it. You don't want that drying out on the tip, do you? Not really. Okay, here we go. 
So remember, these are elongated crosses, is what you're looking for. Something like that all the time. So how will we create a three-dimensional ball using crisscross marks? It's going to be a similar idea to this side here, but this time all we're going to be doing is easing off those marks towards, remember that light spot on that side? So that's where the sun's coming from down there into this area here. So ease off those marks when you get to that area there. Just put a few little tiny ones here and there like that. Just crisscrossed all the time. So it gets lighter and effectively paler as it works its way up towards that light area. And you find this is a much easier way than trying to do parallel lines. I think the parallel line is obviously neater than crisscross, but this is still fairly effective when you get the lines on the paper. So all you're doing, filling it up, remember to ease off that light area. Just a few little tiny marks like that to suggest that there is a bit of texture there. Then as before, what we'll do, we'll increase the amount of marks for the darker areas. So let's start off with the back of the ball here. Keep overlapping, keep increasing those marks. So the really dark areas are going to increase those marks even more so. Then ease off as you start to work your way around the ball. And as you can see, there's plenty of shape showing because of these crisscross marks. And there you go. There's another way to create more of a three-dimensional ball using just crisscrosses. Now let me show you an example when I've used crisscross marks within my watercolour pen and wash paintings. So what I'm looking at around here, this is quite dark in this one area, but we don't want to go too dark again, do we? Because we need to allow that gap in between for the colour to go over the top. So just be careful not to go too dark. But add a few more lines around this section here. It sort of sweeps in this sort of general direction, doesn't it? So more or less like that. And that's what I'm looking at around there. The thing is, you don't want to put like a line, complete solid line there, do you? So you do want to blend it out either side. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So you've got to be careful. Uh, and when you work your way around, notice that the hairs get shorter on this side and also lighter as well. So when you add your first layer on, fine. When you go in there with the second layer, just ease off those marks a little bit. Allow more gaps in between those marks. Now this method is really useful when you're working with animal fur, hair, that sort of thing really. Whereas the first one, the parallel lines, you could use that for the texture of a building, uh, anything that's probably a little bit more symmetrical. Scribble, here we go. Let's start scribbling. <laughs> Lots of little scribble marks like that, all over the picture. But again, we're going to ease off where the sun is hitting from that side. Remember, this is the darkest side. So remember where that light is hitting it. And all we're going to do, as before, increase the amount of marks towards the darker side. The dark side. <laughs> and I'm going to just ease off around here. Just put a few little dots and dashes and squiggles just around there. Just to suggest it's lighter, but we still got a little bit of texture in there. Then start to increase your marks the lower down you go. And remember to ease off towards that lighter area. Then gradually increase the amount of marks. The further over towards the left, the darker side, that you tend to go. As you can see, I'm starting to increase the scribble marks for those darker areas. And I'm making them smaller as well. So it's not all the same size. So some of my scribble marks are really, really tiny. So literally like this. Very, very tiny. Now if you did this with a finer pen, like a 0.1 nib, you find the lines will be much finer, much neater as well. But it will take longer to fill an area with a finer tipped pen. Now with pen and ink, I only tend to do the basics, you know, the kind of things that I need to do for my watercolour paintings. But this will give you some general ideas on what you can do to create texture and shape just by using a single pen. I know. So I've increased the amount of the lines on this left hand side, as I said. So it's quite complex down there now, isn't it? It really is. I'm going to get even tinier, right to the very edge, to darken that area, just by using squiggles though. Nothing, nothing other than squiggles all the time, just very small versions of them. And the same at the base of the ball as well. Very dark down there too. And there you go. That's how to create a more three-dimensional ball, just by simply using squiggles. Now let me show you an example when I've been using these squiggle marks within my pen and wash paintings. And then towards the middle, Use the side of the pen again and just graze it again just so there's very pale areas. Just to hint a little bit of texture. 
and the other side of the line, do the same again, but then just angle that pen up a little bit more, just to catch more of the ink really. So slightly darker, or what you can do, just use the side of the pen again, but just add more squiggles, <laughs> as simple as that. Just more squiggles to create a slightly darker mark on that side. I'm trying to get that kind of undulating feel to it. The same on this side now for the other line. So slightly darker around there. Squiggle it out, small tiny squiggles and circles. Then ease off that nib. Now stippling, and that's quite self-explanatory, isn't it? I know we're using this tiny, tiny dots like this. That's all we're doing, all the way over. Again, easing off towards that lighter area where the sun's coming from. Okay, where the light is coming from. Could be a lamp, who knows? So a few tiny little dots down there. Now it would be better for you to have your pen vertical, but because I'm on the camera, I've got the camera up above, I need to put my hand to one side so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my pen slightly angled like that. But I suggest you try and keep your pen as level or as vertical as you can get it. So let's cover this paper now using stipples. I'll just quickly put one layer on, but again, I'm going to ease off for that lighter area. Okay, that's one layer on, as you can see. <laughs> so it's all looking very flat at the moment. So I need to increase the amount of dots now for those darker areas. So remember what to do. Like we've done everywhere else at the moment, just increase the amount of dots in this case, rather than lines, to make it darker in certain places. This is a bit more of a time-consuming technique, it really is. Again, I've done this on one of my video tutorials on my Patreon channel, just to give my members an idea on how to do this and the effect that you can create through doing it as well. And it is quite effective. So again, I'm gonna to go towards a darker side here, start to increase these dots. At the moment, that's more of a mid-tone, isn't it? It's not really dark. That's gonna be more towards this area here. And I'm gonna get lighter again as it works its way across the ball. So let's get darker. Let's increase the amount of dots in the darkest side first of all. And then I'm gonna add a few mid-tone dots around this area here. All right, let's get stippling. Well, you can see how it's gradually got lighter now as it goes towards the top there. And the amount of dots have increased down here now is quite a lot, isn't it? Really have, there's literally thousands of dots there now. As I mentioned, it's quite a time consuming process, but it's very neat as well, isn't it? When you do it this way around. And depending on the thickness of the nib that you use, will depend on obviously the size of the dots, it really well. So there you go, that's stippling, and you can obviously increase the amount of dots as much as you want to for those darker sides there. Depending on obviously the light source. Where's that light coming from? <laughs> so if I stipple this one here lot, then what I can do, just very lightly stipple, I'm barely touching the paper lot, hardly any pressure, the pressure with the pen again, that's it. Just around those areas, and then as I come towards the side, I'm going to increase the amount of dots. Not so much the pressure, just the dots. So just use the same very light pressure for the weight of the pen. And just increase those dots. And you can see now I'm getting a gradual curve on this section here. I don't want it too dark. Again, I need to leave some white paper to show through so when we add those colours over the top. Now then, contour. Contour lines. Hmm. This is where we're going to be following the shape of the ball. So even though we've just got a circle at the moment, what we need to do is think about having a line going down the middle first of all. Okay, so we're going to tap a line right down the centre like that. Nearly straight, it will do. It will do. <laughs> and then you've got to think about the curve. You're going to follow the curve of the ball. So, for example, between here and here, obviously you've got the middle roughly about there, roughly. I'm going to create a curve all the way around to these two points like that, and then one in between that, like so. And then, if we keep our paper still, from the same point to the same point, one in between those two are there. And we're creating a contour already by creating shape. The other side's gonna be very much the same, but as we know, we're gonna ease off those areas where it's lighter. For that light spot, remember, where the light's coming from, from there. So ease off around there, and what we're going to do is fill all these gaps in between as well, following the same directions all the time. We're trying to also think about where we need to increase these marks as we do so, and also decrease some of the marks as we do so. So now we've got the start of the shape. Let's start adding more in between these areas now. 
Remember, less around that area there. The one down there now, and down there, and so on, and so on, and so on. Just remember the two points we're working from. North and South Pole. There you go. <laughs> All the way around. And sometimes it's easy to get your body in the right angle. So if, if you find you can't get that curve of your hand like that, turn your paper around and do it upside down. I'm going to increase the amount of lines now. The amount of curve contour lines around the darker area. But easing off as I go towards the top. And use the lines you've already created as guidelines as you do so. And you see already we've got plenty of shape going on this, haven't we? I'm going to gradually get darker now towards the base and also the left hand side. And if you are enjoying this video, please remember to click on like and subscribe down below for me. It's that way around, when I put a new video here on YouTube for you to watch, you shouldn't miss it. And that's just another way of creating more of a three dimensional ball shape is by using contours. Oh, it's a little bit different that one, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. I'm going to keep going over the same lines again, just to darken that area. And then the same away from this side. Flicking them out, thinking about this curve all the time. Overlapping those lines as well. Something like that. And then a few odd ones in between. What I tend to do is think about a circle. Okay, so as I rotate my pen, I catch it on one side of the circle as I come around. So I'm going to tie a circle like that. And I'm catching it on the left hand side of that circle like so. Now the next one, can't stop a lot, I really can't stop. The next one is going to be cross hatching. I know, I can't stop, it's so tempted to carry on with this. Now cross hatching really is as it states, all we're doing is by using little marks like that lot and then crossing like so. I love to exaggerate on purpose. And then you can put noughts and crosses or tic-tac-toe if you want to in between. Now cross hatching, as I mentioned, can be just simple like that or you can use it in curves. Let's do some curved cross hatch lines like so. So we can do it that way around as well to create shape. So that's what I want to do with this one here. I've been working curves today. So I'm going to do the same thing again like I've just done here. But once I've got that layer on here, I'm going to cross hatch it by going the opposite direction. So there you go. Now what I'm going to do is do the same thing but the opposite way by crossing the lines. So basically cross hatching. So if I just come this way first of all and tap, what you need to do really is turn the paper around. So it's that way around. Okay, I'll just show you on this way. Remember that lighter area around there. So I think about that central line. We're going to gradually come away from that line with the curves like that. This is the other side there, which is going to be invisible there though. So the curve is going to go like that. So do the same below, like that. The curve is going to go right to that point there. And where the sun's coming from again. They're going to start to form those curves around that shape. Get your guidelines in first of all, like I'm doing here. So it's worth having those guidelines in because it just gives you a general idea on where things go. And start to form the crosshatch effect over the top of that, like I'm doing here. Overlapping all the time, but easing off, remember, towards those lighter areas. So when you get to the middle area here, that's going to be in the mid-tone area, isn't it? So obviously you can do this for straight lines, different angled lines as well. And the other good thing about cross-hatching as well, I'm going to show you in a minute, is I can do much more than that. What we can do is go another direction as well. So instead of having, for example, let me just show you on here a lot. Parallel lines that way. Parallel lines this way, just keep them straight lines for a change rather than curved. Then we can go another direction that way to make it darker. Do another one like that. Then we can even go another direction. Let's go this way. So you can see just by overlapping the lines from different directions, you get darker and darker and darker. All the way along from the lighter end, like that, it gets darker towards that side just by adding more lines over the top from different directions as well. And that's what I'm doing with this ball here. Then, remember what we said about the cross hatching? So we go the opposite way as well. We'll do the same again, keeping the pen nice and low. And we'll do this on this side now. So I'm turning my hand around. 
just grays in that paper. But this is more evident for this area here where it's a little bit darker. And this is sort of traditional pen and ink work really, the way I'm doing this. Through cross hatching, through squiggles, through dots. Just to kind of add that detail on. And these are just six different techniques you can use for pen and ink drawings. So working with the parallel lines, remember, that's going to be more for the textured feel of a building, that sort of thing. Then we've got crisscross, as I mentioned, more for fur. Then we've got scribbles, ideal for texture. Imagine something like a wall or bushes, trees, that sort of thing for foliage. Stippling, again, for texture. Footpaths, sand, a variety of things you can create texture just by doing that. Contour lines to create more shape, which you can do, as you can see, just by doing contour lines. And cross hatching again, just by creating even more shape many more lines over the top, but always considering the direction these lines go. And I've done all of this just by using the one pen. So you can imagine what you can do by using different thickness nibs as well. If you fancy learning a little bit about the pen and wash technique, have a look at the link to the top right hand corner. I'll see you there.